step after you've got the rail layout done, it, well, is to probably go lay out the styles. And so let's let's spend some time doing that next. Now these I have not uh, completely laid out, so I thought I would uh, walk you through the process. So here you can see I've got this clamped together, and I'll I'll leave it like that during the entire layout. I've measured my case height, and uh, once I know the case height, I can transfer that onto, um, onto my stock. So in this particular case, I cut my stock again about maybe a quarter of an inch longer than it needed to be. And uh, I then measured in or just you know, roughly centered that, that height onto the, the, onto the board. And I've made two marks for the left and the right hand side. Now I'll take my square and hold it carefully in position. And this is pretty, this is maybe if you haven't used a knife much, you want to take some time with this, but hold it pretty firmly in position and start with a real light scribe and then progressively get deeper. And you'll get a nice knife mark. You do that on both ends. Now, the tenon, it, since this is the vertical piece, the style, this is the piece that goes up and down, my tenon is going to go through a mortise in these pieces. I don't want that mortise to extend all the way to the bottom. It would be like a tuning fork. It wouldn't be very stable. So I've measured in, and this is on the plans, I've measured in a particular distance from the bottom and down from the top, and again made a mark there, and I uh, will scribe that line in. And notice that in this case, I'm doing these on the, uh, on the edges, not on the face, because this is where we're going to punch out the mortise. Whereas on the uh, rails, I was making these marks on the face. The last thing I need to do is to, and you can uh, literally uh, do this by holding up your, one of your pieces, but I want to go ahead and mark where this inside shoulder uh, will end up. Because the tenon that I cut on this particular piece is going to uh, have one edge here and then one edge uh, this, this distance in. So we're going to have a tenon that starts, oops, sorry, we're going to measure, the distance that we measured in here from the outside to the start of the mortise is the same distance that we're going to measure from the outside of the rail to where my tenon starts. We'll get to that in a little bit. And the other edge of the tenon will be on this inside bead edge. So basically I need to mark that width on this piece, and I've done that, and then scribe that in. Okay, let me just double check it. And that should line up. So right at this point now, the outside edge and this new scribe line that we've put in place should be this width. And ultimately we'll start the tenon right here, which is that inset line. We'll do the same thing on the other end. So with that, we have the layout marks on one edge. I'll actually rotate, I'll, I'll transfer these marks around to the other side and have the, the same distance for the mortise on both surfaces. The next thing I need to do is find the front face, and I al almost always label the front face, and uh, now I will, on um, these, uh, between these two scribe lines, I'll use my same uh, double pin mortising gauge, and I'll put in the pins, and I'll do the same thing, since this is a through mortise, I'll do that on both sides. Now, if you've labeled the, uh, the top or the inside edge, you can also, while you're at it, just continue this mortise layout screwed that up. Remember to keep the face of the wood consistent. 
the, you know, the outside face. So you can do this, and now you know right where the rabbit for the panel needs to be. We'll do that on both of these. I won't demonstrate that anymore. But so that's that's pretty much it then for layout. Now what you want to do is just so there's no mistake, is go ahead and put some marks here to know where your mortise is going to be. So it's pretty easy. Uh, at this point, now we've got our mortise layout. I'm going to t take out that little section all the way through the piece from left to right. This will be a hole that I can look through when I'm done. And uh, once I cut the tenons in the rails, then they should slide into the mortises that we just marked out once those are punched out. And the only thing that will be left is to cope around this little bead. So to form these rabbits and beads, there's a number of ways to do it. I'll give you a real quick demo on the rabbit. You can use a rabbiting plane. Uh, I have this one set up and literally just follow your rabbit. The nice thing about this is that it doesn't make a lot of noise or dust. You can adjust it pass by pass. Fairly quick, it's got a depth stop on it. And there we go. So now I've plowed a rabbit. Now the bead, and they make planes, uh, wooden planes that will do both, but the bead itself uh, is similarly formed by a beading plane. That's a, a manual method. Now I did this in pine, and it's not perfect, but it gives you an idea of how quick you can uh, form that same piece using a wooden hand plane. Not difficult at all. And again, if you've chosen your grain orientation of the curly maple correctly, even this process is feasible to do. But I'll, I will be honest with you, the wooden planes and even the rabbiting planes in this curly maple, I find to be just an absolute bear. You saw how much I struggled with dishing out the, uh, the bracket feet on the bottom of the case. And it only gets worse, and this, this bead is so fragile that the way I would approach it, if you're going to use hand tools to do this, is to use a shoulder plane. First of all, plow in this dado, uh, then use the, a, 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 again, a dado plane and plow in this fillet. Sorry plowing this fillet on top, and then come in. So what you'd have left, once you've plowed in those two things, is a, is a little peg here, a little tenon almost sticking out. And then come back with your shoulder plane, which you can get a nice tight mouth on, and just roll this, this bead over, and then finish it up with a little sanding block. Uh, and I think that's a, probably your best bet for the curly maple by hand. Uh, you can also use a router bit and uh, find a bit set that uh, gives you the profile that you like. Uh, the nice thing though about the shoulder plane is that you can make this be whatever, you can make all these dimensions whatever you want them. You can just set them in custom. Uh, a wooden molding plane, you're kind of locked into the profile of the molding plane. Same with the router bit set. So I would highly encourage uh, you to learn how to roll this bead with a shoulder plane. I've uh, the next step was just to go ahead and mill out the bead and the dado like we t discussed. And if you've done a good job selecting your grain orientation and you've used the marking gauge to scribe lines everywhere, uh, tear out should be at a minimum. Every one of these pieces turned out fine. I've seen curly cherry and curly maple where if you run the wrong direction with any method, you'll get enormous chunks out and it's really a, a nightmare. So. Just use good technique, uh, take your time with grain orientation, and uh, milling these should be no, no problem.